Yo, what is going on fam? Keezy here from Black Market. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how you can create realistic, cool, vintage looking uh, halftone illustrations like the one you see here. We're gonna do this all inside of Adobe Photoshop using the Black Market Ink Lab plugin. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into Photoshop and take a look. Okay, so here we are inside of Adobe Photoshop and I've gone ahead and opened some artwork. Uh, this is an illustration created by one of our in-house designers and I think it would be a perfect piece for this demonstration. So the first thing I'm gonna do before doing anything in InkLab is just click the hamburger menu on InkLab and then refresh InkLab. What this will do is sort of reset it to the default state um, so that we can both follow along and ensure that we are on the same page as far as what our current settings and everything are. Um, so the next thing is to increase our output resolution. So I'm gonna raise it from 72 to 300. This will give InkLab a lot more detail to play with. Next, in our effects, I'm gonna turn on Roughen on all channels, except for magenta, because I actually don't want the magenta pattern to get lost. And then next is gonna be Wave, I'm gonna put wave on the black channel. I'm gonna put heavy on the black channel and on the yellow channel. And I think that's actually gonna be it for the effects. Nothing too crazy there. Moving up, we're gonna enable shadows and we're gonna choose a background color of sort of a light beige color. Something like that is what I would recommend. And then um, for our process, we're gonna go from basic to advanced. And then the density, I'm gonna put around 20. And then uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and run it. Let's see what we get. Okay, we just ran Ink Lab and this is the result that we get. Uh, it's okay, but as you can see, there's a few areas where things get what I would call muddy, uh, meaning it's just a little, there's too much going on and the amount of colors overlapping and things create sort of this muddy brown effect. This can happen um, with Ink Lab and the way that I like to get around this is just by defining my selections manually. So what I do is I hide my main Ink Lab group and then back on our original artwork here, I'm gonna go select color range and select cyan. And we're gonna use this selection to limit the area where cyan can um, be visible. For example, if you zoom in here to this area, which we would expect to be sort of a black and white halftone, we're getting little teeny dots of blue in here that are contributing to the color. And this is by design, so this is how Inkleb is supposed to work, but for certain circumstances, we don't want it to be that way. So what we're gonna do is select our cyan output channel, press Control or Command G to group it. Now we have that group. I'm gonna rename it C for cyan, and then I'm gonna click this little mask icon. And so now what you'll see, okay, and we just need to invert it, so Control I. Oh no, that's right actually. So now what you'll see is that our cyan is no longer affecting anything else, so it's limited to the selection that we gave it. If we hide everything else, you'll see that illustrated very clearly. And now we're gonna proceed to do that with also yellow and also magenta. So I'm just gonna go back in here, select my yellow, group it, call it Y for yellow, hide that, and then press the mask icon again. And so now our yellow is limited only to that area in which we want yellow to be visible. We're gonna do the same thing now with magenta. So select color range. I have to be on our previous artwork actually. Select color range, click the magenta, and now go back in here, group magenta, make it visible, and then again, create a mask. And so now we have our three primary colors masked out perfectly so that there's no weird bleed or overlap happening. So if I zoom in here, this is what it looks like with magenta overlapping cyan, and this is what it looks like with pure cyan. It's actually a bit of a cleaner, less muddy, um, just a better look. Now I'm gonna enable the K channel. This is gonna be our black. 
And you can see immediately, and I'm going to come back up here and just show you the before and after. So you can see immediately, this is our default. And then this is with a couple of basic selections and masking techniques. Okay, so as you can see, it's already a huge improvement over the default, but there's still a few things that I want to address here. For one, um, now that we've made those custom selections, our edges are a bit sharp, a bit mechanical looking, like you can see this one here is a lot sharper than I would like it to be. The easy way to fix this is just to select the mask and then go filter, blur, and you can do a box blur or a Gaussian blur. I usually do a box blur and so this gives us, and I'll just do control Z, so this is the before and after. It kind of just blends a little bit better when you do that. Don't go crazy with it, but just a soft box blur on your outer mask can really help. Another thing that I like to do is grab our colors and then just kind of nudge them. So I'm nudging that magenta down a bit and what this is giving me is this really cool overprint registration error effect. And I'm gonna do that with my yellow as well. So now on the overlap, you're seeing this sort of green, which looks pretty cool. Okay, so there is that. And we are honestly in a really good place here now compared to where we started. And uh, I noticed that the piece overall is not fully centered up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just center by doing Command A to select the entire canvas. And then with my outline selected, I'm just gonna press the centering icons and now we have it centered up. And this actually creates kind of an interesting effect on its own where we have these cuts from the missing um, portions of the, of the K channel. What I'm gonna do is just kind of move them back into place, not super carefully, just grab them and kind of put them so that they have a bit of overlap still and look kind of natural. I'll do that also with cyan. And then we need to take all of this and just move it over a bit more to the left. And I think centering wise, this is a bit better. I'm gonna create a snapshot here so that we can look and see actually which was better. Yeah, so this centering is a little bit nicer. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is just bring in some outside texture. So yeah, by default Ink Lab does have this background texture, but it's really just that. It's just background texture. It's a super subtle texture that's just there to give Ink Lab some grit to work with. But if we wanna actually bring in some really nice vintage paper, um, we can do that by just dragging on top and then positioning accordingly and then tweaking some settings here. So I'm gonna put that vintage paper on multiply there and then just lower the opacity a bit, duplicate it. And then this one, I'm gonna put the opacity back at 100% and come in and uh, double click on the side to bring up our blending options panel. And then this, this layer, we're gonna drag that from the right to the left just to kind of mask out some of this uh, white and only get those dark paper stains, which is kind of the goal here. And so that's a lot nicer looking. So this is without the texture. This is with it. So if you like that textured look, definitely uh, source some additional paper textures, bring them in, slap them over and do that. So this piece is coming along pretty well now, but uh, there's still a few things that we can do to take the effect even further. For one, we can add a bit of that paint, or not paint, I should say ink welling effect. So at the edges, it's got that sort of uh, dried ink look to it. And to do this is actually pretty easy. We're just gonna go grab our magenta layer here to start, do FX, inner glow. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and actually reset to default so that we can build this together. Um, I'm gonna put the blend mode on normal 
opacity at 100 and then I'm gonna put the color on black and I'm just doing this so that we can see the effect better as we're tweaking the settings. And then we'll go back and reduce this so it's a color that looks better. We're gonna increase the size a bit. And then increase or and then change this contour to this hill shape. Now we can increase the size a bit more. Mess with the range until we start getting this ring effect, which is what we're going for. So I'm gonna reduce the size a bit more again now and play with the ring some more. Increase the noise value a little bit. Something like that I think is good kind of tweak our curve here a bit. And then I'm gonna go and change this color from black to our background color so that it looks like there's less ink in that area. And then I'm just reducing the opacity a little bit. We can change our spread value a bit more there, maybe mess with the size, and just kind of keep tweaking these values until we get something that looks like our printed uh, ink effect. So I like that. It's super subtle, but it's kind of a nice touch. Another thing I'm noticing now is that our ink bleed is overlaying our black and that's not what I want. So I'm just going to grab the K channel and move it to the top, just like that. And so that covers that up. Next, I'm going to go and copy that ink effect that we made by right clicking and copying layer style, and then go to our cyan, paste it, and then go to our yellow, paste it there. It's not super needed, but it's kind of cool. And then we can even add that effect to the black channel. So when we add it to the black, the effect looks way too intense. And so to fix this, we're just going to go into it and then tweak the size a little bit and then tweak the opacity. So the opacity isn't as strong. I'm even gonna lower the noise a bit. It should be subtle, probably something like that. Maybe not even needed that much. So we'll bring it even lower to 20. And then I'm gonna copy that layer style and I'm gonna paste that one also on the blue because I don't want the blues to be that uh, aggressive either. One last thing I want to show you is how you can actually uh, cut out certain areas and give your ink lab effect a bit of damage. So what we're going to do is take this uh, layer that we made earlier that was this multiply effect. And so right now you can see it's kind of giving the image a dirty look. We don't really want it to have that dirty effect. So we're just going to use this as a mask by right clicking, converting it to a smart object. And you have to have gone in here and done this step already for this to work correctly. And so we can actually tweak this a bit more in here to get a higher contrast look. So uh, we're gonna right click convert to smart object and then I'm gonna control click the thumbnail, control or command click the thumbnail, and then hide it and then use this selection now to paint out additional areas of our uh, image. So I'm actually just gonna group C, M, and Y and then create that mask on the top of them, invert it. And so now we've got some damage to the effect. So some of these areas where previously we were getting that kind of muddy, dark look from this that we didn't want, now it's actually just uh, subtracting a bit of detail, which is a better look in my opinion. And if you think this effect is a bit too intense, what you can do is just open up the properties window here, which you probably have on by default. And then with your mask selected, just lower this density a bit. And you can even increase the feather of the mask and just tweak these values until you get uh, a result that's a bit more appropriate for you. I'm gonna leave it at no feather because I actually like the hard damage look. But the density could be a bit lower. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is all for today's video. I hope you learned at least one new thing in this, something helpful. If you did, I would appreciate that you hit that subscribe and notification icon. Also leaving us a comment or a like does help us uh, in terms of boosting morale, boosting our channel's popularity, getting more viewers. 
all of these things that make our channel better and drive us to produce more content for you. With that, I'm out. See you guys in the next one.